How y'all doing this morning? Are y'all excited? Shout out to our Facebook fam. Anybody know that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever? Somebody say the Lord is good. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Say, Lord, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. Y'all ready? One, two, three, let's go.
rise this morning? Anybody come to let the glory rise this morning? Hallelujah. Can we say that the glory of the Lord rise among us?
Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless each and every one of you on this morning. I'm so excited to be here yet with you another day. Thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast each and every week. Why don't you go ahead and do me a favor as always. Go ahead and share our page and start a watch party and help us share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Make sure you comment, get involved in the service. We're getting ready to go into the word of God. I pray each and every one of you just had a blessed, phenomenal time uh, with your family and friends for Christmas. We truly know that Jesus is the reason for the season. So we thank God for blessing us with another Christmas and we thank God for what he's doing in our lives. Hallelujah. Let's start out by giving God a great big hand clap of praise for blessing us to be here the last Sunday of 2020. My God, we've made it this far by faith. The Lord has strengthened us and been with us through the entire year of 2020. Though the year may have been rough, though you may have been through some things, God has been with you through everything in 2020, and you ought to give him a praise right now and just God give God a great big hallelujah praise. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing us to be here the last Sunday of 2020. Amen. So we're getting ready now to go into the word of God. We just heard some dynamic praise and worship by our awesome uh, praise and worship team, and now we're getting ready to go into the word of God. We're going to be in the book of 2 Timothy on today, the book of 2 Tim Timothy chapter 4. I'm going to be reading verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7, reading from the New King James Version. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7, reading from the New King James Version, and it reads, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Let me say that one more time. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. The message on this morning is finish strong. Hallelujah. Finish strong. Why don't you go there to say that to yourself right now? I'm going to finish 2020 strong. Hallelujah. Look at somebody that you may be in the house with or somebody that you're next to and tell them, we're going to finish 2020 strong. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big hallelujah praise anyhow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Right where you are right now, go ahead and declare by faith that you are going to finish the year 2020 strong. Hallelujah. And you declare right now that as I'm finishing 2020 strong, I'm going to start 2021 off strong as well. Including today, there are five days left in 2020. And you ought to declare right now that I'm going to finish the rest of these five days strong in 2020. Why? Because the year is not over yet. You still got time to evaluate some things in your life. Hallelujah. You still got time to evaluate some things with your family. You got time to evaluate your finances. You got time to overlook your health. You got time to look at what happened physically and mentally in 2020. Hallelujah. You still got five days left in 2020 and you still got time to make the most of it. You still got time to cut some things off in your life. Hallelujah. I know it may be a struggle uh, to give up certain things in your life and you may have been battling all 2020, but you ought to declare right now, these next five days, I'm going to dedicate to the Lord and I'm going to finish 2020 off strong and I'm going to catapult going into 2021. Hallelujah. Somebody may be struggling with gossip right now and you say to yourself, I want to do, I wanted to do less gossiping in 2020 and you found yourself gossiping most of the year. You can dedicate these next five days to say, Lord, I'm dedicating my mouth to you. Even if I have to stay off 2020, I'll stay off social media the rest of 2020, I'm going to defeat that spirit of gossip. Somebody say amen. Somebody might have been struggling with overeating all year. Hallelujah. And you said, I've been overeating for 360 days. You may have to say to yourself, 
the next five days, hallelujah, I'm going to stay out of the aisles of Walmart. I'm going to stay out of the aisles, the Twinkie section and, 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 and the donut section and all the stuff that caused me to overeat. I'm going to stay out of those sections and I'm going to finish 2020 strong. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody right now may be saying, hallelujah, that I've been overspending in 2020. And you got to say to yourself for the next five days, I'm staying out of the mall. I'm staying out of places that would cause me to overspend. I will finish strong in 2020. You got even time right now to say to yourself, hallelujah, toxic relationships that I've been involved in in 2020, whether it be friends or people I've been connected to or people that just wasn't good for me or relationships. You got the next five days to say, I'm going to cut this thing off because I don't want to carry it in the 2021 with me. Somebody say amen. Somebody right now may be struggling with a sinful lifestyle. Hallelujah. And you made up in your mind now. I don't want anything blocking my blessing. And I want to dedicate the next five days to purging and cleansing myself going into 2021. And I'm going to place this struggle and this stronghold and this sinful lifestyle in the hands of God and believe God for my deliverance and finish 2020 strong. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got to say to yourself that I'm going to finish strong. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish strong in prayer. I'm going to finish strong in the word and I'm going straight in strong, strong in faith for the next five days. Hallelujah. Say to yourself right now that I got this by the hand of God. I got this because God is strengthening me. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor right now, right where you are and tell him, we got this because God's hands is upon our lives. We might be tired, but we got this. We might be weary, but we got this. We might be flat out exhausted, but we got this. We may be COVID-19 fatigued, but we gonna finish 2020 strong. Somebody say amen. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 40 and 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. No matter what you've gone through in 2020, you can declare right now that I'm not going to faint because my strength is being renewed according to God's word. Somebody say amen. Somebody say we're not going to faint. Hallelujah. You may be a little drained, but you're not going to faint. You may be a little empty, but you're not going to faint. You might be uh, dog tired, but you are not going to faint because God is going to give you some renewed strength to finish out 2020 and carry that momentum over to 2021. Say, I'm going to end the year strong and I'm going to start off the year strong. Somebody say amen. So this morning, we want to glean some principles from 2 Timothy chapter 4. And we're going to go back up to the top of the text. And we're going to work our way down from verse 1 to verse 7. So take a journey with me this morning as we go to the word of God in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and starting out with verse 1. Remember, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, hallelujah. Here we see uh, the apostle Paul, he gives young Timothy a charge and, 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 and young Timothy was a pat was the pastor at the, at the church in Ephesus and young Timothy, uh, he was Paul's protege. Hallelujah. Timothy was Paul's uh, spiritual son in the gospel. And so here in verse one, he is charging young Timothy to preach the gospel and verse one and two. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse one and two right now. It says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Verse two says, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. And so the apostle Paul has given young Timothy his spiritual son, who is a pastor at the Ephesian church 
a charge. He tells him in verse two, preach the word. Hallelujah. He tells him to preach the word. Hallelujah. He didn't tell him that he had to like the word or approve the word. He told him to preach the word. In other words, he's saying, don't preach you. Don't give your own opinion. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Your job is to preach the word. Somebody say amen. Don't give them what you think you want the word to say. Give them and preach to them what God's word says. Somebody say amen. I encourage each and every one of you here on this morning, just like the apostle Paul encouraged young Timothy to preach the word, always make sure you give people the word of God and not your opinion because your opinion does not strengthen people. It is the word of God that strengthens people. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. And apostle Paul charged young Timothy to preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. And so what he's telling young Timothy, his motivation can never be to please people. Hallelujah. His motivation always has to be to be faithful to God's word. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you on this morning. Hallelujah. Always be faithful to God's word. Hallelujah. Give people God's word, whether they like it or not. I'm going to say that again. Give people God's word, whether they like it or not, because he encouraged them to preach the word in season and out of season. He said, always be ready to preach the word, whether it's easy or whether it's hard, whether it's received or whether it's not received, always be ready to preach the word of God. Hallelujah. Remember that on this morning. Hallelujah. We're all preachers of righteousness. Everybody may not be called to the pulpit, but we're all called to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And remember this, we don't need to try to invent anything new or come up with anything ourselves or try to come up with our own message. We're charged to preach God's word. Somebody say amen. And you're charged to share and preach God's word. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you for the rest of 2020, which is five days, including today, to stop focusing on how people are going to react to God's word. Just give them God's word and allow the Holy Spirit to convict them. Hallelujah. Because if you give them their opinion, your opinion, or water down God's word, then you don't give the Holy Spirit a chance to convict them. Because the Holy Spirit brings conviction based on the word of God, not man's opinion, not how you feel about it. You have to give people the truth of God's word so the Holy Spirit can work in their lives. So I encourage all of you, the rest of 2020, going into 2021, don't focus on how people are going to react to God's word. Do your job, give them God's word, and allow the Holy Spirit to bring conviction. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because here's the thing. Here is the thing. You already tried to give it to them soft. Many of you have tried to give it to your relative soft. You, you didn't want to tell them flat out what God's word said because you were so concerned about how they would feel and how they would react. My God. So you've already tried that and it didn't work. You might as well give them God's word and watch God work in their life. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I read it. Rather for somebody give me the truth and it hurts than to tickle my fancy and I'll be on my way to hell. Somebody say amen on today. Give them God's word. And let God work in their life. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. He tells him in verse 2, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. My God, he tells them, Apostle Paul encourages young Timothy to do three things. He says, convince, rebuke, exhort. That word convince means to convict, to tell a person a fault. To show them their fault in love. So to, to, to convince 
is to pull a person to the side and show them their fault uh, through by way of the word of God to show them where they went wrong so the Holy Spirit can convict them so they can make changes. Hallelujah. Then he also said, rebuke. Rebuke means a charge, almost like saying, don't do that. I rebuke you. Like you've seen in the Bible when Jesus rebuked the waves and the wind and it had to stop. So sometimes you have to uh, give a sharp rebuke so people don't go down the wrong path. Somebody say amen. And then he encourages him to exhort the people. That means to comfort them, to encourage them, to build them up. Hallelujah. See, you can comfort and encourage and build people up without watering down the word of God. Make sure you never, ever water down God's word. Encourage them, build them up, but do not turn away from God's word. Somebody say amen. Now, let's look at verse three. Verse three says, for the time will come when they would not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. Verse four said, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. So in verse three, uh, the apostle Paul already encouraged Timothy to preach the word in season, out of season, because he said that's going to come a time when people are not going to want to listen to sound doctrine. Hallelujah. But he said, you don't be swayed by the people. My God, because he said the people sometimes have itching ears. Hallelujah. Having itching ears, meaning I want to hear something pleasant, even if it's not the truth. I want to encourage you right now at the end of 2020 and going into 2021, make sure that you don't have itching ears. Itching ears is when you neglect the truth of God's word because you want to hear something pleasant for yourselves. Hallelujah. You're more focused on pleasing yourself than pleasing God. Hallelujah. There's too many Christians with itching ears now. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Being an itchy ear Christian means that you're a person that always goes around trying to validate your sins, trying to validate your affairs, trying to validate your wrongdoings trying to justify what you're doing. That's having itching ears instead of reading God's word, seeing what God's word said and getting your life to apply and line up with God's word. Make sure at the end of 2020 that you make up in your mind that you're not going to have itching ears. And I want to encourage you right now to fight to have mature ears going into 2021. Hallelujah. You want to be on meat and not milk anymore. The meat of the word of God. You ought to say to yourself, I want the truth. Even if it hurts, somebody say amen. A needle going into your arm may hurt for a moment, but the serum that's in the needle can help save your life. Hallelujah. And that's what God's word does. God's word is the serum. God's word is the truth. God's word brings about transformation. Make sure you don't have itching ears going into 2021. Make sure at the end of 2020, you say, Lord, I want my ears to be mature. I want, I want the truth of your word. If my life is out of alignment with your word, I want to get my life in alignment and agreement with what your word is saying. I don't want to be calling people, trying to validate while I'm in my sins, trying to validate why I went off on somebody, trying to validate what I'm doing. The only validation I want is to be lined up with your word. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. And here right here, having itching ears many times causes offense. You got to stop letting every little thing offend you and grow in God's word. And verse three, because the people didn't want sound doctrine, they wanted things according to their own desires. Their ears began to itch. And so because they wanted to hear things they wanted to hear, hallelujah, they raised up teachers for themselves. Hallelujah. Teachers for themselves. And verse three, so that tells you right there, just 
because a teacher is popular or on TV doesn't mean that teacher is faithful to God's word. Somebody say amen. Let me say that again. Just because a teacher is popular or on TV does not mean they are faithful to God's word. Now, it doesn't mean they're not faithful to God's word, but just because they're popular doesn't mean they're faithful to God's word. Because here in verse three, the people raised up teachers for themselves because their ears were itchy and they wanted them to preach things that they wanted to hear instead of things that they needed to hear coming from the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Because some teachers are bought like these teachers. These teachers were bought. And how can you know them? Hallelujah. Because their fruit will not line up with God's word. These type of teachers here will compromise for money. They will compromise for applause. They will compromise to please men. They will compromise to get celebrity status. They will compromise and skirt around the question of sin because they're trying to please men and not God. Somebody say amen. I want you to listen to this in 1 John 4 and 1 and it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. That's from 1 John 4 and 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are going out into the world. You got to test the spirit. You got to lie what they're saying up against the word of God to make sure it's true. Because here, the apostle Paul was encouraging Timothy to be on guard because these people with itching ears had raised up their own teachers to teach certain things for them, meaning that those teachers were bought. So make sure that you test the spirit by the spirit to make sure their fruit lines up with God's word. Somebody say amen. Look at verse four. Verse four, second Timothy four and four says, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Hallelujah. The Bible said they turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. See, because they have raised up teachers to teach them things they wanted to hear, it was easy for them to stray away from the truth. And the Bible said they turned aside to fables. So I want to encourage you right now. You got to make sure that you guard your hearts and your minds against false teaching, false doctrine, and evil, even fables. Glory to God. Somebody said, what is a fable? A fable is a short story to teach a life lesson. A fable is a fiction tale. Uh, it's, it's almost like a why, why saying. It's like why sayings, but it's, it's fictional. Hallelujah. It's a story to teach about life lesson. Some things that we've heard in times past were just sayings or, or fictional things that people said. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody may say in the old school, like, man, my God, that, that little baby couldn't teeth early. He's going to be wise. Well, that's a nice saying. Don't mean that's true. It ain't coming from the word of God. It's just something said. So everything that's being said is not from God. Somebody say amen. The Bible said they turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to fables. Hallelujah. Now, it's all right if people want to share their life stories and and make a point through illustration and 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 and, 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 uh, um, and, and kind of connect it with the word of God, hallelujah. But if a person just giving illustrations and, and talking about things of life and just trying to motivate you, well, if I come to church, I'm not looking for a motivational speaker. I need a preacher of righteousness. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. If I'm uh, looking to be motivated, then I'll go to one of the motivational speakers or go to a convention. But when you come to church, you want to get the unadulterated word of God. Because the Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need to get the word of God down in your spirit. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I don't care how popular somebody is. My God, if they've been preaching for 40 to 45 minutes and never talk about the word of God, 
You need to cut that out of your life. Somebody say amen. Because if a person is not strengthening your inner man and strengthening your spirit, it's turning into a fable. It's turning into a saying, but it's not the word of God. You need to be strengthened in your inner man by the word of God. These people had turned aside from hearing the truth because they raised up teachers to say things they wanted to hear. They start listening to wise, just saying wise fictional sayings, but not the word of God. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to finish strong in 2020 being filled with the word of God. The Bible said, be not drunk with wine. Hallelujah. But be filled with the spirit. And the way you get filled with the spirit of God is saturate your life. With the word of God, somebody say amen, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. Because somebody telling me their life story doesn't strengthen my faith. It is the word of God that strengthens our faith. Glory to God, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. We need his word going into 2021. And we need to finish 2020 out with his word, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, moving along to the heartbeat of the text this morning, starting at verse five. I want you to make sure you take some notes. Starting at verse five. Verse five says, but you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Four things the apostle Paul encouraged Pastor Timothy with, and these four things I want to encourage you with this morning. Write these down. Be watchful. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Be watchful. The first one. Be watchful. It says what? In all things. Hallelujah. Be watchful in all things. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He didn't say be watchful in some things. Be watchful in all things. Glory to God. Being watchful means to be sober. To be calm and collected in the spirit is to have a spirit of discernment. It means I got my eye on some things. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You got to be watchful. Hallelujah. Over certain things in your life to be watchful in all things. Keep your eyes open. Be watchful over your life. Be watchful over your family. Evaluate your circles closely that you're connected to. Evaluate uh, 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 the circles even your family is even connected to. Hallelujah. You got to be watchful. My God, because salt and sugar looks the same. Somebody say amen. But they don't taste the same. Salt and sugar looks the same. But they don't taste the same. That's why you got to have discernment. You got to have a watchful eye. My God, flour and cocaine look the same from a distance in a bag. In a clear white bag from a distance. But they're not the same. One will make the cake rise. And one, if you put the same amount you put a flour in a cake, can kill you. So flour and cocaine in a bag from a distance look the same. That's why you got to have a watchful eye. Somebody say amen. Somebody say have a watchful eye. My God, that's why you got to make sure that you don't have things or people in your life that look helpful that can kill you. Flour and cocaine look the same in a bag from a distance. That's why you got to have a watchful eye. Somebody say amen. You got to evaluate your life. Evaluate your family. Evaluate your circle. Evaluate the people you're hanging out with. Keep an eye, watchful eye going into 2021. Somebody say amen. The Bible says, but you be watchful in all things. Watch your money. Come on, watch your money. Are you giving to God first? Are you tithing? My God. Or are you overspending? Are you managing your money well? Keep a watchful eye over your finances. Or do you find yourself at a payday loan every other week because you're not managing your money right? I want to encourage you to finish not the rest of 2020 having a watchful eye over your financial resources 
that God has blessed you with. I know we only got five days left, but you can start turning things around now and say, I'm setting a budget. I'm giving God his first and I'm going to watch God work the end of this year and going into 2021. Somebody say amen. Somebody say have a watchful eye. You got to have you watchful in all things. Now, look at the second one. He says, number two, he says, endure afflictions. We don't like that. Somebody say endure afflictions. Somebody say endure afflictions. He said endure afflictions. Endure afflictions means you got to learn how to suffer trouble. You got to learn how to uh, 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 handle hardship. He said endure affliction. My God, hardship. That means you got to learn to suffer patiently. Glory to God. That word means to suffer patiently, to hold up under, to endure afflictions. Afflictions are things that cause pain in our life. John 16 and 33 said, in this world you will have trouble. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He didn't say you might have trouble or trouble may come. He said, you will have trouble. My God. So there's going to be sickness. There's going to be disease. There's going to be heartbreaks. There's going to be divorce. There's going to be pain. There's so going to be suffering. That's going to be somebody that make you mad. That's going to be somebody that curse you out. That's going to be something that happens on your job. That's why he says endure afflictions. Hallelujah. Everyone that's watching, we have to learn to endure afflictions. My God, glory to God. Just because things start happening doesn't mean that God is not in it and doesn't mean that God is not on the throne. Some things that happen are just a test of our faith. Much has happened in 2020, and God is teaching all of us how to endure afflictions. Somebody say amen. Things are going to happen on your job. That's just the way it is. You can't keep running from job to job and have 25 jobs by the time you're 30 years old because you don't know how to endure afflictions. Things are going to happen in life. Somebody say amen. Even at church. Things are going to happen. Yes, your church, my God. If you go to this church, yes, your church, endure, uh, things are going to happen. Nobody is perfect. No church is perfect. Somebody say amen. But you got to learn how to endure afflictions. My God, it's not time to run. Every time one little thing's happen, hallelujah, it's time to learn how to endure affliction. Glory to God. It's not time to run when you don't get your way. It's time to endure affliction. Now, many times, sometimes people's time is up, whether it be at a job, whether it be at a church, or whether they're your assignment, sometimes people's time is up. But many times, people don't know how to handle afflictions, and they run. Glory to God. But my question to each and every one of you, hallelujah, did you run when, when trouble happened on your job? Because many times people say, well, I went through church hurt. I'm not saying that's not real, but did you say the same thing when stuff happened on your job? Did you go through job hurt? God, my God, did you just up and run away from the job? Or did you tough it out? Or uh, after you, they cussed you out, and even though you don't know your supervisor don't like you, you still been on that job for 30 years, somebody say amen. So how come people run at the first sign of trouble at a church? You got to learn to endure affliction. Somebody say amen. Because if you're not saying nothing about job hurt, then you can't bring up about church hurt. Because many times you endure way more things in the world than in church. But people look at it different because you're treating the world better than God's house. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. It may be tight, but it's right. Learn to endure affliction in every circumstance in your life, somebody say amen. And when you learn to do that, you'll be strong in the Lord. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because many times, people, uh, a boyfriend, a dog, a young lady out, a, a boyfriend, dog, anybody out, a female out, a woman out, 10 times is she taken back. Supervisor, go off on that person 30 times. They go back into work every day. One little thing happened at church, people run because you got to learn how to endure affliction in every area of your life. 
Somebody say amen. And then many times you ask people, well, what happened? Well, they didn't let me fry the chicken at the event at church. Or they didn't let me lead the Easter play. Come on, somebody. Or they didn't let me preach. How long you been there? Well, I've been there for a good solid three weeks. Come on, somebody. Now, you got to be trained properly. Come on, somebody. You've been there three weeks, and you talk about preaching. No, sir. The Bible say lay hands on no man suddenly. You got to learn order. You got to learn leadership. And you got to learn to endure affliction and stop being so offended by every little thing. Learn to endure affliction. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Now, Look at this. Verse 4, the third one says, verse 5 says, but be watchful in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist. Number three, write this down. He told young Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of an evangelist. My God. And that's why I want to encourage each and every one of you. The same charge he gave to, young, he gave to Timothy, his spiritual song, he said, do the work of an evangelist. In other words, he said, look, you may be a pastor, you may not be called to full-time evangelist, but you're called to do the work of an evangelist. Somebody say amen. And many of you watching may not be called to the five-fold ministry in Ephesians 4.11 for as an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, but we're all called to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why he says do the work of an evangelist because the person who sits in the office of an evangelist has a strong calling and a burden in leading people to Jesus Christ. And many of their messages, or most of them, are centered around salvation from the beginning to the end. So we may not be called to a large platform like a Billy Graham or uh, Pastor Greg Laurie on that type of platform, but we're all called to do the work of an evangelist, even though we may not uh, uh, sit in the office of an evangelist. Somebody say amen. Because the Bible said, by God, and you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you, Acts 1 and 8. And the Bible said, you shall be my witnesses. Everybody is called to be a witness of Jesus Christ. Everybody's called to share the good news. And I want to call you, uh, uh, encourage you to do the work of an evangelist the rest of 2020 and going into 2021. Hallelujah. Now that word evangelist means a bringer of good tidings. A preacher of the gospel. What's the gospel? The good news of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. And those that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So an evangelist or doing the work of an evangelist is a messenger of hope. That's why the word evangelist has the word angel in it. Hallelujah. An angel is a messenger from God. So we're sent with the message of Jesus Christ to the world. Somebody said, do the work of an evangelist. So I want to encourage you the rest of 2020 and going into 2021 to do the work of an evangelist. Somebody say amen. Now, you might can't knock on everybody's door and interact with them right now because of COVID-19 restrictions, but don't let that stop you. My God, you can still write letters. You can still put gospel tracts in an envelope with a letter and mail it to your neighbor. Somebody say, man, Jehovah Witness do it. I got a nice letter in the mail. My God, you can walk down your street, get all the addresses, put some, uh, write some nice little letters, put a gospel track in there and share the good news of Jesus Christ. Do the work of an evangelist. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. My God, do something. Send an email blast with evangelistic scriptures. Glory to God. Play some salvation scriptures on your social media page. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Put some gospel tracts on your neighbor's door. My God, you ain't got to have an interaction. My God, let the Holy Spirit convict them. Somebody say amen. My God, be a witness to your unsaved family members and your backslidden family members. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you go to your gro to the grocery store, have a checklist before you leave. Got my Bible checked. Got my gospel tracts checked. Got my church information checked. Because I want to make sure after they read the gospel tract that they can tune in and listen to the word of God on Sunday morning. Somebody say amen. Do the work of an evangelist. Somebody say amen. My God, we're all called to do the work of an evangelist. 
And the last one, he says in verse five, fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your ministry. Glory to God. Fulfill your ministry. Your calling, your assignment. That's what he told young Timothy. Fulfill your ministry. My God. That's what you were created for. And I'm encouraging each and every one of you this morning to fulfill your ministry calling. Hallelujah. Write this down. You were not created to do what you want to do. No, sir. You were created to fulfill God's purpose in the earth realm. God created you with his purpose in mind, not yours. So you are obligated to fulfill your God-given calling in the earth realm. Hallelujah. Your calling and your assignment is why you're here right now. The reason you're breathing is to fulfill your calling in ministry. Somebody say amen. My God, that's why you trying to do your own thing is not working. Because that's not why you were created. That's why you running after the bag or running after money or running after all these jobs is not working because that's not why you were created. That's why you getting comfortable in a retirement mindset is not working because that's not why you were created. See, God doesn't change his mind of why he created you. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. When you get in purpose of why you were created, that's when you will flourish. Somebody say amen. Somebody say, fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your ministry. Write that down to yourself. Fulfill your ministry. Fulfilling your ministry. That's your vocation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, there's a difference between your occupation and your vocation. Your occupation is your job or your profession that you go and you make an income to provide for your family and fund the kingdom of God. That's your occupation. But your vocation is your divine calling to ministry. Know the difference between your occupation and your vocation. Somebody say amen. So for me, I use my occupation as a territorial sales representative for my company. I use my occupation to fund my vocation. I use my occupation to take care of my family, hallelujah, and use the financial resources to bless and fund the kingdom of God. That's what my occupation is for and be a witness along the way. Hallelujah, glory to God. But my vocation is my divine calling and assignment. Many of you are good at fulfilling your occupation but have neglected your vocation which is, which is to fulfill your ministry calling. My God. Moses was doing good in his occupation as a shepherd on the backside of the desert. Moses was 80 years old. He had gotten comfortable. He had a wife. He had kids. He's in that retirement mindset, just taking care of the sheep uh, on the backside of the desert. That was his occupation as a shepherd. But then God said, Moses, Moses. Moses said, here I am. Hallelujah. God said, it's time for you. To operate in your vocation now. Your divine call to ministry. Glory to God. Not only do you shepherd the sheep. But you are called to be a deliverer. Hallelujah. Of your people Israel. You're called to be a prophet. To the nations. Glory to God. And you're called to shepherd your people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I have more in store for you. Than just being on the backside of the desert for 80 years. Being on the backside of the desert for 80 years prepared you for your calling and your vocation. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you like Moses for the rest of 2020 to get focused on your vocation, your divine calling, your assignment in ministry. Hallelujah. Many of you are using your gift like crazy in the, in the, in, uh, uh, for your job or in the world system. Hallelujah. And many of you need to use your gifts to glorify God in the body of Christ. Somebody say amen. When you start focusing on your divine calling, hallelujah, in ministry, then everything else will start lining up. 
you got to say to yourself, I got to quit chasing money. I got to start chasing my call. I got to quit chasing opportunity. I got to start chasing my call. I got to quit chasing worldly things. I got to start chasing my call. I got to stop putting God on the back burner and I got to start chasing my call. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. When you start being all in for your call and assignment to fulfill your ministry, then God will be all in in blessing you. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. I want to encourage you right now to fulfill your ministry calling. Glory to God. If you call to be a pastor, come on and get ordained for real. Glory to God. If you call to be a prophet and an evangelist, come on and get ordained for real. Get on the good leadership. Get trained properly. Let them lay hands on you at the appointed time and get sent the right way so you can fulfill your God-given ministry and call and somebody say amen. Don't put a title on yourself. God calls you, but man or woman validates that gift through observation and training. The Bible says lay hands on no man suddenly, but you need hands laid on you to send you out to do kingdom work if you're called to the fivefold ministry. Do it the, the right way. Stop that spirit of running. Get trained properly. Get in order with God and fulfill your ministry calling. Somebody say amen. We need you. The world needs you, but do it God's way. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Get in order with God. Now let's look at verse six. Verse six, we're closing it out. Verse six, and then we're gonna close it out in verse seven. Verse six says, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand. So Paul knew here, as he was encouraging young Timothy, Paul knew his assignment was about to be up in the earth realm. He was waiting execution. Paul said, I'm about to catch a flight to heaven now. I know I have finished my race. Paul is saying, hallelujah. He said, the time of my departure is at hand. Paul knew that he was about to go on to be with the Lord. He knew he had carried out his God-given assignment, but also as well, he wanted to make sure that he passes the baton to young Timothy. Glory to God. Because so, see, God's work has to continue. We might pass on, but the work of God continues on. And the apostle Paul wanted to make sure he hands the baton off to young Timothy so he can continue the race. Somebody say amen. Now our last verse here, and this is how we're going to close it out in verse 7 about finishing strong. Verse 7 says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Paul is encouraged knowing that he's going to receive his crown in heaven because Paul has been faithful to his ministry calling and he has been faithful to the end. Glory to God. And I want to encourage you going into 2021 to be faithful in ministry and faithful to your call. I want you to focus at the end of 2020. How am I going to serve God better going into 2021? How am I going to give better going into 2021? How am I going to be a better witness for Jesus Christ going into 2021? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, three things that Paul declared. Hallelujah. Regarding his earthly ministry here before he departs. He encourages us all. He encourages Timothy and he encourages us in verse seven. He said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Three things I want to encourage you with on this morning. Keep fighting, finish the race and keep the faith. I'm going to say that again. Keep fighting, finish the race and keep the faith. Hallelujah. Paul said in verse 7, I have fought the good fight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And many of you have fought hard in 2020. You've overcome so much. You've overcome unemployment. You've overcome racial tensions. You've overcome depression. You've overcome isolation. Many of you have overcome rejection. You've overcome loneliness. Many of you have overcome sickness. Even many of you have overcome COVID-19. You tested positive and the Lord blessed you and strengthened you and you bounced back. 
Hallelujah. I know for many of us and for many of you, it's been tough. But I want to encourage you like the Apostle Paul to keep on fighting. He said, I fought the good fight. So I want to encourage you to keep on fighting. I know that's been a battle, but keep on fighting. I know it hasn't been easy, uh, easy but keep on fighting. God has not brought you this far to the last Sunday in 2020 to leave you now. The Bible said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God has not brought you this far through all the hell and the high water that you've gone through in 2020 to leave you now. You've made it this far by faith and God's hand is still upon you. Get back in the ring. Keep on fighting. Throw the next punch. God is right there with you. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You might be wounded, but keep on fighting. You might get hit, but keep on fighting. You might get knocked down, but keep on fighting. The Bible said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That means the weapon might be formed, but it will not prosper. Somebody say amen. You made it this far to the last Sunday of 2020 for a reason because the Bible said, if God be for us, who can be against us? The devil couldn't stop you. Hell couldn't stop you. Sickness couldn't stop you. Rejection couldn't stop you because the hand of God is upon your life. Keep on fighting. Somebody type that right now. Keep on fighting. He said, I fought the good fight. Look at this right now. He says, the second one, I have finished the race. I want to encourage you right now. I know there's only five days left and you've gotten weary, but I want to encourage you right now to finish this race in 2020. Hallelujah. COVID-19 couldn't stop you so far. The racial tension couldn't stop you. The unemployment couldn't stop you. The depression couldn't stop you. The isolation couldn't stop you. The health challenges couldn't stop you. I want to encourage you right now to keep on and finish the race. Somebody say amen. Don't throw in the towel now. Hallelujah. It's time to finish the race. Somebody say amen. It's time for you to pull those goals back out. I know many of you have given up on your goals, but it's time for you to pull your goals back out. It's time for you to get focused. It's time for you to look forward to your brighter future. And it's time for you to finish 2020 strong. Somebody say amen. See, this is how the devil does. He always try to mess with our mind. The devil will have you thinking, you've done too much in 2020. He said, how you gonna come and you got five days left in a year and you know you've been jacked up for 360 days and you only have five days left. Glory to God. But the devil is a liar. Your five day commitment to God is greater than the 360 days that you messed up. The Bible said if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and purify you from all unrighteous. Put it on God's altar. Tell God I messed up. I, I walked away from some things that I said I was going to stick to, but I give my heart, my life, and my mind to you the next five days to finish out 2020 strong, and I dedicate my life to you. Somebody say amen right now. God is able to do it. God is able to turn it around. God is able to destroy the yokes. God is able to break the bondages. God is able to destroy the stronghold. God is able to lift up your family. He's able. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I don't care if it's only five days left. Five is the number of grace. God is able to give you more grace and more favor to finish out this year strong. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I'm challenging everybody that's watching right now to dedicate the last five days to the Lord and watch God turn it around. Somebody said turn it around. You dedicate these last five days to the Lord and watch God turn it around. Finish 2020 strong in prayer. Finish 2020 strong in the word. Finish 2020 praising God. Finish 2020 worshiping God. Finish 2020 lifting up the Lord. Come on, he's gonna turn it around. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the last one I want to encourage you with, the Apostle Paul says, I have kept the faith. He said, I have kept the faith. 
I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. You know how you made it through 2020 and you know how you're going to make it through 2021 is by keeping the faith. It's by keeping the faith. That word kept means to attend to carefully, to hold fast, to observe. Paul said, I kept the faith. He said, the way I was able to do that many years of ministry and do it effectively, my God, is that I kept the faith. The only way I was able to fight the good fight, the only way I was able to finish the race is that I kept the faith. Somebody said, keep the faith. Touch that right now and encourage somebody. Tell them to keep the faith. Look at the person you sent beside this morning, right where you are, and tell them to keep the faith. Hallelujah. My faith, come on somebody, my assurance, my belief, and my hope is in nothing less than the solid rock of Jesus Christ. My faith is in God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit dwelling down inside of me. Somebody say, man, you might go through some things, but I'm telling you right now, keep the faith. You might be in a struggle right now, but keep the faith. You might be going through some hardships right now, but keep the faith. You might be feeling lonely right now, but keep the faith. You may be going through a financial crisis, but keep the faith. Somebody said, keep the faith. Hallelujah. Because all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose. Keep the faith. No matter what you're going through, don't let the devil rob you of your faith. Hallelujah. Jesus told Peter, Satan desires to sip you as wheat. He said, but I pray that your faith fail not. Make sure as you close out 2020, don't, don't let your faith fail not. Don't give up not on throwing the tower. Your faith has kept you through 2020 and it's going to keep you through 2021. Hallelujah. You may have some family problems, but keep the faith. You may not see your way out of this, but keep the faith. You may have some questions about church going forward, but keep the faith. I'm telling you right now, if you hold on to God's unchanging hand and keep the faith, you're going to see breakthrough. You're going to see a turnaround. You're going to see God do the miraculous. You'll see God do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask a thing if you keep the faith. Hallelujah. I want somebody right now to give God a keep the faith type of praise right now. Right where you're, clap your hands. Give God some praise right now that he has kept you in 2020 by faith that God has been faithful to us and we need to keep the faith in our God because our God is bigger than any problem, bigger than any circumstance, bigger than any trouble, bigger than sickness, bigger than disease, bigger than COVID-19. God is on the throne. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. The last Sunday of 2020. Give God a roar right now. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name that God has kept you through 2020 by faith. Hallelujah. You declare right now that I'm going to finish 2020 strong. I'm going to finish strong. I don't care what has happened this year. I'm going to finish 2020 strong and it's going to catapult me going into 2021. I don't care what this year has looked like. You declare what God's word said right now. You declare your victory. You declare healing. You declare breakthrough. You declare your deliverance for you and your family. You declare that the favor of God is on you and your children and your whole household. You declare that God is going to bring us out. You declare that this too shall pass. You declare right now that your family is going to win. My God, and you declare right now that we're going to keep on fighting. We're going to finish the race and we're going to keep the faith because we are more than conquerors through Christ that strengthens us. The Bible said we walk by faith and not by sight. Somebody say amen. Don't go by what you see. Go by what God's word says. We walk by faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't let your eyes be blinded to what the news is saying or what you're hearing about you because there's, there may be restrictions in the world right now, but there's no restrictions in the prayer realm. There's no restrictions 
in the spirit realm. There's no restrictions on God's word. Somebody say amen because prayer will go get that thing that you can't do in the natural. Prayer will handle COVID-19. Prayer will handle the vaccination. Prayer will handle unemployment. Prayer will handle the election. Prayer will handle your family. Prayer will bring about salvation. Prayer will bring about deliverance. Prayer will bring about breakthrough. Everything by supplication and prayer. Hallelujah. We will finish 2020 strong and we will be catapulted in the 2021 because of the hand of the Lord. We're going to finish this year strong together. Come on and clap your hands right now. Declare it. We're going to finish this year together strong. My God, we're going to keep on fighting. We're going to finish the race. We're going to keep the faith. Four things we're going to do going to 2021 is Paul encouraged Timothy. We're going to be watchful in things. We're going to endure affliction. We're going to do the work of an evangelist. And we're going to fulfill our ministry calling. Amen. Come on, if that word bless you, give God a great big hallelujah praise on today. God bless you all. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage somebody on today to keep the faith. My God, I know 2020 has had his, its challenges, but God has truly blessed us indeed in 2020. God is still in the healing business. He's still in the deliverance business. God is still in the bringing out business and he has showed himself mighty in 2020. I want to encourage you the last Sunday of 2020 to finish strong. My God, hallelujah, finish strong. Keep on fighting. Finish the race and keep the faith. Hallelujah. The devil wants us to throw in the towel, but we will not throw in the towel. My God, we will look to the hills from which cometh our help, and our help cometh from the Lord, who is the maker of heaven and earth. Somebody right now, you, you may need to get back rededicated to the Lord. This is the perfect time to do it. Last Sunday, going into 2021, uh, the last Sunday of 2020, make it in your mind that you're going to rededicate your life to the Lord and get back on track going into 2021. There may be somebody watching here right now who has never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Right now, the last Sunday in 2020, don't let this Sunday go by without giving your life to the Lord. There's only two places we go when we leave this earth. It's either heaven or hell, but that choice is up to you. But thanks be to God, he's already given his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. The Bible says that those that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And so if you call on his name today, He'll save you. If you're watching right now, if you want to give your life to the Lord on this last Sunday of 2020, pray this prayer right now. Say, Father God, in Jesus' name, I know that I'm a sinner and I'm, I'm in need of a Savior. I believe your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for my sins. I repent right now of all of my sins. And from this day forward, I surrender my life to you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, know that you got saved on today. My God, why don't you go ahead and email us and let us know about your decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. For those who have accepted Christ, you need to get in a Bible believing church right now so you can continue to grow in your faith and walk uh, in the Lord. If you want to be a part of our ministry, just email us and let us know that you want to be a part of our church family. We will surely get back with you right away and welcome you into the family of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And at this time now for everybody watching, you have an opportunity to give. This is the last Sunday of 2020. Why don't you go ahead and get your best offering right now? Uh, uh, for those who are part of Destiny Church, thank you so much for always giving your tithes and offering. I want to encourage you guys to give your tithes on the day and give your best offering to the Lord to close out 2020. Show the devil that you mean business going into 2021 with your giving. The Bible said God loves a cheerful giver. What better uh, a day than to do it? Then on the last Sunday 
of 2020. Hallelujah. For all those, those that want to give, you can go to our cash app right now uh, and go Destiny Church Live uh, to give on our cash app. Destiny Church Live to give on our cash app. Or you can go to our secure uh, uh, website to give to as well. God bless each and every one of you. I'm so excited to spend the last Sunday of 2020 with each and every one of you. Let's all finish strong together and let's all be encouraged in the Lord going into 2021, knowing that he that began a good work in us shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to each and every one of you. And we look forward to you being back here with us on next week. God bless you all.